بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم ربنا لك الحمد والشكر كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم إنا نعوذ بك منك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Inshallah, you're all well? Excellent. Very good. Uh, we, tonight, inshallah, we are, tonight or today, we will talk about uh, one other important uh, disease of the heart, and this is al-ghafla. Uh, al-ghafla can be translated to mean heedlessness. Heedlessness or to be neglectful of something that is important or of significance. Ghafla is the opposite of dhikr. Ghafla is the opposite of dhikr. Dhikr is literally remembrance. But a broader meaning of dhikr is to be in a state, constant state of awareness of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because when we often speak of dhikr, we think of dhikr in the form of Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, which is true. But also dhikr in the form of reading the Quran, which is true. But the more comprehensive dhikr which is the opposite of ghafla, is to be in a constant state of awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a constant state of awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very much linked to also the issue of muraqaba. Muraqaba, uh, if you open Riyadh al-Salihin by Imam Nawawi rahmatullah alayhi, a well known uh, book of hadith, collection of hadith by Imam Nawawi, rahmatullah alayhi. The second or the third chapter is on muraqaba. Muraqaba is to know that Allah is watching all the time. Watchfulness. In this case, Allah Azza wa is watching. A person who is aware that Allah is always watching, a person who is aware that Allah Ta'ala sees all and hears all, cannot be in a state of ghafla, cannot become heedless. But he or she will be in a constant state of dhikr, awareness. That's why uh, in, in, the, in Arabic they say, even if you are by yourself at home in the midst of the night, in your private room, nobody else is there, لا تقل إني وحيد. Don't say I am alone. وَلَكِنْ قُلْ مَعْيَ رقيب. But say, رقيب, a watchful eye is over me. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person reaches this level, then he or she will become in a state of true dhikr, true awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the opposite of ghafla. So ghafla is a serious, in fact, some scholars say it's one of the worst diseases of the hearts. Because people become ghafil, uh, heedless, when the heart is no longer reflective or responsive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah ta'ala save us from, uh, from becoming people whose hearts are locked because a person continues to be heedless until the heart is locked. When the heart is locked, then it's very difficult then to know Allah Azza wa Jal or to remember Allah Azza wa Jal. And so ghafla has multiple meanings, but the ghafla, the heedlessness that we want to talk about here, al-ghafla an ibadatillahi wa liqa'ihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to talk about tonight the ghafla 
being heedless from worshipping Allah and being aware of Allah, that's one, and heedless from the reality that one day you will meet Allah. This is the ghafla. Uh, and often the biggest cause for ghafla, heedlessness, is the love of this dunya, is the love of this world. Now when we, when ulama speak of the love of dunya, or don't love dunya, it doesn't mean you completely detach yourself from this world. Alhamdulillah, our deen, Islam, is wasata. It is the middle path. It is neither this extreme nor that extreme, which makes it even more difficult, actually, because it's always easier to go to either extreme. And it is always much more challenging to be on the, straight, on the middle path, because that requires a lot of balancing. Right? It requires a lot of balancing. It's just like riding a bicycle. The minute you stop, you will fall, or you will become imbalanced. You go to this way, or you go that way. That's why uh, Einstein, when he wrote a letter to his son, he says, son, this life is like riding a bicycle. To keep going, you need to, 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 to remain balanced, you have to keep pedaling, right? And so this deen, our deen, is a deen of moderation. And so it is neither this extreme where you fall heavily in dunya, that you become ghafil or heedless of the hereafter and meeting Allah. Nor is it the other extreme of detaching yourself completely from this dunya, that you ignore the responsibilities and the role that Allah Ta'ala has placed upon you. And so the extreme where you fall headlong into dunya and you love it so much and it becomes the objective this has manifested itself today in the form of capitalism, for example. Secularism and capitalism, where money is it, and they, they speak of economic rationalism. We can rationalize everything in the name of money, right? And it's no longer about values or morals or ethics. So one, on one hand is to become deluded Maghrur, to become deceived and deluded by the wealth of this world. Thank you, brother. I went home and I said, I thought I brought it. By the way, this is my wife's, right? So she says, has anyone seen my water bottle? And I kept quiet for a while, right? Because <laughs> I took it, uh, I, this was the only thing in front of me last time. She said, I'm looking for it for all this time. Anyhow, then I said, actually, I think I may have forgotten it at the masjid. So, thank you. Jazakallah khair. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, I'm saved. <laughs> you saved me. Saved me. My... So, uh, one extreme is this, this extreme love of dunya that blinds people. It blinds people so that a person may say, I will sell my mother for money. I have heard that statement actually from some Muslims saying, I'll sell my mother for money. Or the other extreme in other traditions, for example, where zuhud or asceticism or zuhud detachment from this world becomes so extreme that you're only holy, you become holy when you have no longer any responsibility in this world or towards anybody. And you become a, a rah, rah, rahib or a, 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 a monk. And Allah Ta'ala categorically said, لا رهبانية في الإسلام There is no monasticism in this deen. No monasticism or رهبانية. A rahib is somebody, a person who detaches himself completely from this world in the name of worship that they have to rely on everybody else to feed them. And if we go to this extreme, then the world will stop functioning. And so the middle path is the path that says, you have to live in this world. Allah gave us this dunya to live in it. And Allah gave us 
a sharia, a, a lifestyle, a pattern, a guidance to facilitate our lives in this dunya, not to complicate it, but to facilitate it so that you live in this dunya, eat in it, but eat that which is good and halal. Don't stop eating. Drink, but drink that which is, which is good and halal. Work and earn from that which is good. And if Allah de decides that you become a multimillionaire from halal sources, so be it. Because in Allah, yuhibbul al mu'min al qawi. Allah loves a believer who's strong, physically, financially, and so forth. So heedlessness is when you are in either of these two extremes. And being in a state of awareness means to fulfill what Allah Ta'ala has asked you to fulfill in every state of your life and in every stage. If you are putting your clothes on, you are aware of Allah Azza wa Jal by making dhikr and knowing this is a ni'mah from Allah. When you are eating, you are in a state of awareness. When you are speaking with your spouse in a dispute, you're having a dispute, you're in a state of awareness because you do not transgress the limits. Even in, in, a, in, a, in a time of dispute, you don't transgress the limits. Why? Because you know you are watchful, Allah is watchful. You're not ghafil, you are not heedless. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, ayatul munafiqi thalath, wa fi riwaya arba'a. The sign of a hypocrite is three. In another narration by Muslim, four. The signs of a hypocrite are four. All of us know the first three. If he speaks, he lies. If he promises, he breaks. If he gives a, a covenant or a co contract of whatever sort, he is treacherous. And there is a fourth. وَإِذَا خَاصَمَ فَجَرْ When they dispute, they transgress the limit. They go beyond. And you see this in some cultures where when the man and the wife begin to dispute, which is not abnormal, it's normal actually to have arguments in the house because we are human beings. What is abnormal is you need to transgress the limits. You go beyond what is required. And when they, trans, when they dispute, they transgress the limit. So in some cultures, the man starts or the woman starts abusing him and his parents and his tribe and his family or the opposite. This is transgressing the limit. Or becoming violent. This is trans, trans, transgressing the limit. Right? That is not allowed. So from, these, from some of the aspects of ghafla, some of the uh, aspects of ghafla is al ghafla an ayatillah. فمن الناس من هو غافل عن آيات الله المنظورة وآياته المتلوة. To be heedless from reading Allah's signs. And Allah's signs, as I mentioned last week, Allah's signs are in His open universe and signs everywhere, but we can't see it. We are ghafil, we are heedless even from these signs that are glaring at us. And we can't see it. So there is the signs that are in the universe. And there are the signs which we read in the Quran. There are the signs which we see with our eyes and hear with our ears and feel with our senses. The signs in the open cosmos, the signs in the universe. Every morning we wake up, there are massive signs in the cosmos. The sun that rises looks at you and says, I am one of Allah's biggest signs. Can you see me? Am I reminding you of Allah? Am I reminding you of the majesty and glory of Allah Azza wa Jal? The sun is 1.3 million times bigger than this earth. 1.3 million times bigger than this earth. But when you see it, you don't think that, right? If you see a, a, a picture, an astronomical picture of the sun and the earth against the sun, then the earth looks like a black dot on the disk of the sun. And we live in that dot. And this dot compared to the sun is nothing. And there are other suns in the cosmos that are millions of times bigger than this sun. 
And all of these suns in the cosmos, in the great cosmos of this multiverse, as we mentioned last week, are nothing because there are more planets and galaxies and stars on, in this cosmos, that is the known cosmos, than there are sand particles in the oceans of the, sh of the shores of the oceans. The sun is a sign. It says, read me. The moon is a sign. It says, read me. The trees are a sign. Right? The ocean is a sign. One of the great, one of the scholars who used to visit Australia, he passed away, uh, rahmatullah alayhi. He used to always come and, when he used to say, take me to the zoo and take me to the ocean. Not because he wants to see the zoo, really. And he would stand in front of the cage of the lion and just look at the lion and read the signs of Allah in this lion. And he would say, this is of Allah's greatest ayat, this lion, or any other animal. And then he would stand by, and he would go to the beach and stand there and listen to the waves and see the depth of this majestic ocean and will say, this is of Allah's greatest ayat. This is of Allah's greatest signs. So there are signs in this cosmos that we need to be aware of. But the sad reality is that most people are in a state of ghafla, in a state of heedlessness, which is the topic of tonight. The disease of the heart of ghafla, heedlessness. And then there are people who read Allah's signs in his closed book, the Quran, but again they are heedless. They're not contemplating, they're not taking lesson from it. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yunus, verse 92, He says, most people are heedless from our signs. Most people are heedless. They are unaware. In fact, some, somebody said, we are like people who sleepwalk. You know, we walking with eyes open, supposedly, and the ears open, supposedly, but we are not seeing the signs. And we are not hearing the signs. We have become so much absorbed in this nowadays that it's become our universe so much so that we don't have time anymore to put it down and go in, your, in the backyard or the front yard in a nice, beautiful, clear night and look at Allah's signs. Seriously. Right? And so we need to take time in order to read Allah's ayat. But also you read Allah's ayat by uh, Allah's signs in the cosmos, بِالتَّأَمُّلِ وَالتَّفَكُّرِ Deep contemplation and deep thinking. And that is why the beauty of Islam is that it never saw aql and naql to contradict each other. It never saw that the intellect and divine revelation as contradictory. In the Islamic civilization and the history of Islam, mainstream Muslims never saw a conflict between science and religion. This conflict between science and religion was in Christendom, primarily. It was in the, in the Western civilization. And it remained for a very long time, until today. That's why in science they don't talk about God anymore. It's Darwinianism, right? Because there is no place for God anymore. Because seemingly both contradict each other. And in the Western experience, it is because there were so many contradictions between